What up, Hyperchange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're doing a book review of Angel by Jason Calacanis, how to invest in technology startups, timeless advice from an angel investor who turned 100,000 into 100 million. So this is a book idea that I got from listening to the Ride the Lightning podcast, which is an amazing Tesla podcast. Ryan McCaffrey, who runs that, had Jason Calacanis on for an interview about Tesla. Jason Calacanis is a famous angel investor in Silicon Valley. In fact, I believe he calls himself the best angel investor in Silicon Valley history or one of the top five. He actually is personal friends with Elon Musk, and I thought it was an amazing interview. And he mentions how he wrote this book, which is basically his guide to angel investing, you know, how he invested in startups and how you know the philosophies that guide his investing strategy so I've always been super fascinated by angel investing um, just a little bit of background on what angel investing is it's basically you know the first investment that people make into a random startup like when you're trying to raise a company they're called angels because they believe in you and basically nobody else does these are usually companies worth you know between zero to five to ten million dollars that are looking to scale to, to become huge companies so just to give you an idea of what that could look like Jason Calacanis was an early investor in Uber. The company was only worth a couple million dollars. Eventually, uh, he invested at the seed round, and then as the company grows, they raise what's called a Series A, where they bring in bigger venture capitalists, um, firms you may have heard of, like Benchmark Partners, like Mark Andreessen, like Sequoia, and then those venture capitalists take the company, and then maybe they do a Series B, Series C, raising more money each time. Maybe they'll raise 500000 in a seed round, or maybe 300000 in a seed round, you know, a couple million in a Series A, you know, 10, 10 20, 30 million Series B, 100 million Series C, whatever. Results can vary, but you get the idea. So he's investing in the tiniest, you know, craziest companies at their earliest stage. It's an incredibly exciting, uh, you know, place to be as an investor. And the book sort of goes through how he describes how anybody can really become an angel investor. It's not just for super rich people. You can allocate a tiny amount of your capital to doing this. Um, and, you know, he really goes into depth about like, here's how, you know, with X amount of money, you could invest in this many startups. There's all these new things popping up online, like syndicates. He even has his own syndicate called Jason Syndicate that allows tiny investors like you and me to actually get involved in, in these early angel uh, type investments. So a ton of exciting stuff. I'm a huge fan of the of the space he plays in. Uh, Jason Calacanis, you know, I've, I've talked to a couple of my friends about what they think about him and he sort of sometimes has this reputation of being like a little bit douchey and arrogant. Um, but I honestly got totally the flip side of that, which is that he's an incredibly sharp guy. He's incredibly honest. He's incredibly transparent. Maybe he comes off as a little bit cocky, but that's because he's so damn good at what he does that he has totally earned that right and way, way more. So I think it is an incredible resource to literally have the playbook of how to invest or do angel investing from one of the most successful angel investors of all time. I mean, Jason Calacanis is an industry outsider. He grew up in Brooklyn, uh, you know, didn't come from Silicon Valley, didn't have parents who were in the biz, but he hustled his way to get there and I just think he's a hungry he's still young I think like the stock you know Jason Calacanis his personal brand equity is something that I would bet on rising massively in the future I mean I just listened to a podcast with this guy he's got incredible ambitions to to you know continue furthering his investing career what he's doing with jasonsyndicates.com helping little guys like us get into these angel deals um, I just think he's a really really fascinating character to follow and this book had me hooked from the get-go, like literally the second I opened it, um, I blasted through this in probably like three or four days while making other videos and stuff. Written almost in the style of, of the hyperchange book, Scheme of Consciousness, where it's really just him, you know, candidly telling you what he thinks. So now I'm gonna do what I do, do what I do with every book review and go through a couple pages that I've highlighted. This is a great start to the book on page four. He says, oftentimes I'm the first money in the in. The first investor willing to take a chance with a company like Uber or Thumbtack when they are only worth four to five million bucks and almost everyone else has said no. So that's just a little bit of glimpse of, of this guy, Jason Calacanis, you know, where he fits into the cycle of when you hear about a company like Uber, that you know, he's involved when 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 Travis Cal when Travis Kalaknik is going around Silicon Valley, he barely has an app, you know, just a couple thousand people are using it. He's pitching this grand vision, nobody believes him, they're meeting him at some Starbucks, and you know, Jason Calacanis says, Okay, here's fifty grand. And and then that 50 grand is worth a couple percentage of the company, which now when Uber's worth tens of billions of dollars, you know, that 50 grand is worth millions, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Oh, this is chapter five. I just love this part. Do you need to be a Sil in Silicon Valley to be a great angel investor? Literally, it's a one word chapter. Yes. I just love that style. I thought that was a hilarious thing. Page 44, sweat equity. This is something that I relate to 
personally on so many levels. As some of you watching know, uh, HyperChange, the show you're watching, the podcast, you know, I'm trying to build my own startup and I've done this with almost all sweat equity. We did just raise a little bit of money like a couple, like a month ago, so I can talk about that later. But the point being here is he has this rule about sweat equity. If a founder is all they can show you without raising money is a PowerPoint deck and they're literally waiting on your funding to start building the project, that's a huge red flag. You wanna be able to invest in founders who can already build what they're building, who have enough conviction to do it without raising funding. Like that's just a hustle score of zero if all you have is a PowerPoint and you're waiting to build your product until you get money in the bank. That never works. And he gives all these hilarious examples of this, like you know, some trust fund kid who says he's a founder, raises a couple hundred grand from friends and family, pays some design agency 50 grand and some software app company 50 grand to actually build his app. Like that, those kind of companies never work. So I thought that was awesome insight. Then chapter eight, how to be an angel investor with little or no money. I love this sort of mentality he has in the book, which is that you don't need to be super rich to be an angel investor. And he really describes how to do it beyond joining some of these syndicate type things um, that he mentions where you can get into these angel rounds with only a couple thousand bucks. He also mentions just all these like grassroots hustle ways to get involved with startups, you know, advising startups where you pitch them on services that you can offer for a tiny amount of stock when they're just starting. You know, if, if you can actually be a value add and that company is successful, that can be a huge way to get your foot in the door in angel investing without ever putting up money. And um, so I think that is a really awesome mentality to go for it as well. Like, like, just the ethos of this book is just like, if you want to hustle and like these startups are out there, it's a huge opportunity. It's super opaque. No one's writing about angel investing because it's such a good game to get in. But if you have hustle and you want to get into it, you know, the opportunities are there, even if you have zero money. He even talks here in chap chapter 10 about how, how if he could do it all over again, he would go right from college into angel investing. But he describes how he basically was watching Microsoft come up with things like the mouse that were making computers so much more accessible. And as a college student, he had so much insight into future technologies, you know, the future preferences of young consumers, where, you know, the society is headed. I just think the sweet spot of being in the know culturally about what's happening in the world is totally after being a college student, meeting people from around the world, getting a great education, being young, being open-minded. So I think that is a huge, huge asset that people like, including myself, I'm 25, just a couple years out of college and a ton of you watching is that, you know, we are consumers of the companies and brands that are changing the world and about to get much, much bigger. You know, whatever you do as a consumer, what products you're using as an early adopter that you think are gonna get bigger, you know, that's incredible insight. And, and it sounds so easy to say like, oh, he saw Microsoft coming up and saw huge potential um, when, and now that seems so obvious and Microsoft's huge. But back in the day, you know, everyone was saying Microsoft wouldn't win, all the establishment and old people didn't get it because they weren't used to technology. So I love this little lesson of like, you're an expert in something, you know, own that. And that's the area where you should be invest investing in. Limiting signal to founders, not ideas or markets. I don't need to know if your idea is going to succeed. I need to know if you are. So basically what he's saying here is when you're betting at the angel stage, you know, don't put too much emphasis on the business model, the company. I mean, that's all important, but really what you're betting on here is the founder themselves. Can they do it? And towards the end of the book, like this is just how detailed he goes into of like literally what to do minute by minute with your pitch meeting, basically shut up and listen, let the founder talk, analyze them, have very short, wise comments, sort of like a Jedi Knight. Um, and then he has these four questions of how, what he asks startups when he's getting to know them. So I'm gonna tell you them right now because I think these are all fabulous and just a super efficient, professional way at doing angel investing and, and framework for how to think about this. So question zero, funny enough, um, is how do you know Jane? Or I guess that Jane's a random person here, but basically saying like, who made this introduction? Start with a one little question of chit chat of like, how do we know each other? Okay, cool. Then question number one, what are you working on? He wants to get a sense of what you're building. Question number two, why are you doing this? Question number three, why now? Question number four, what's your unfair advantage? And so those are the four questions that he asks every startup. He goes into amazing depth explaining, um, you know, why you can, how much insight you can get from these. Eventually he boils it down to what have we learned from asking founder those four questions? You have learned why this founder has chosen this business, how committed the founder is to this business, what are the founder's chance of success in, in this business and in life, and what does winning look like in terms of revenue and my return? Those are the basis of angel investing and those are the things you can already find out from the first meeting by using these questions. After those first four questions, you have to start be developing tactical questions, what he calls, 
where at the end or towards the end of a meeting, you can say something to the founder like, can I ask you a couple of quick tactical questions so they know that you are looking for just a really quick, concise answer. Instead, uh, instead of having to say, can you answer this quickly 10 times, you can just say that first. And he has all these like example questions like, tell me about your competition. How do you make money? How do you charge customers? How much does your average customer spend? Tell me the top three reasons why this business might fail. So I loved that little insight. And once again, just tactical, practical advice for what to do in meetings. Oh, and this is the last thing that I wanna mention, or one of the last things here, is my burn rate party trick. And this is something that I, I almost feel like somehow me and Jason Cal Calacanis are on the same wavelength, wavelength of this, where he sort of stresses the value of back of the napkin math, but always doing back of the napkin math and picking up on all these little micro crews micro clues that founders are giving you when you have meetings with them because if you figure out how much revenue they're generating how many their em employees they have you can predict how much they're paying those employees you know how much revenue they're generating you know how much they raised and they have in the bank in theory you can basically pretty accurately calculate what their burn rate is and how much cash they have left in the bank so jason calacanis says that he often busts that out as like a burn rate party trick saying founders like hey like don't you have about eight months of burn left in the bank but it looks like you're only two months away from profitability so why do you even need to raise money now and all the founders are like no way so i thought that was a really funny example and just a sort of like insight into into calacanis and how his brain works the last earmark i have here and this is something that is actually inspiring me to want to invest in and do angel investing in startups is secondary shares in the secondary market the boom of twitter and facebook and silicon valley companies five years ago created this massive need because they were going public so late for a way to exchange shares privately or in the secondary market not publicly on an exchange but through some sort of online platform. There's a ton of platforms that do this now. This is the way that companies like SpaceX and their employees are able to sell stock once every six months or so in this secondary market and accredited investors can actually buy shares. And so the fact that these secondary markets now exist is a huge, huge opportunity. And in my opinion, the biggest reason to get excited about angel investing is because when you're writing a $50,000 check to a startup, it used to be so hard for you to get that money back because they would either need to get bought out or IPO. Well, now there's a separate path, which is the secondary market, which is way easier than an IPO, could come way sooner, could give you way more liquidity options, and I think makes it way easier and, and in a lot of ways more stress-free to invest in startups because there's just a different way out. And so I love the fact that he highlights this in the book. And I personally think this is the reason why I'm so excited about startup investing and angel investing, because I think there's this massive wave of liquidity that's coming to startup equity that is gonna make it so much easier and more fun and make it better to get involved. And 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 one of my biggest frustrations, now I've, I've hit every page in the book that I like, is that just in general with my investing journey is that it's so hard to access the most exciting companies in the world early. Exciting companies are IPOing later and later. I used to love micro caps, tiny market cap company, companies. I'm still in the micro cap club, which is this awesome club of investors who analyze micro caps. And you know, Warren Buffett got to start in micro cap companies. You know, Peter Lynch got to start in micro cap companies. And the problem is that in all the micro caps, like the quality of talent has just dried up because no startups are going public that early. So all the best companies are staying private and I can't invest in them. And so my personal investing journey as you know, hyper change, as an investor who looks for exciting, disruptive technologies, reinventing industries from the ground up that are led by the smartest people in the world. Like that's all happening in startup, angel, private land. The smartest people in the world are starting companies, raising money from angels like Calacanis, then going to VC firms like Sequoia. And then if they IPO, if they're waiting till they're 10, 20, 30 billion dollars worth of market value and you've missed basically all the upside, even though someone like me could have seen that upside so long ago. I even think I tweeted like way back in the day, like, well, can I please Please invest in Uber before they hit a value of 10 billion. I would love to, and I couldn't. My hands were tied. I saw the trend, and I think there's so many, so many examples of that, like that you and me have. How many people watching the show have been using Robinhood for years and could have easily said that this was the future of how millennials were going to invest? You know, old people didn't get it. It was a smartphone on an app. You know, investing in Robinhood two years ago would have netted you an incredible return. I think the company's already worth billions, and so um, I just think this book is hitting the nail on the head of democratizing access to the most exciting disruptive companies in the world it's helping people do that i think this is a must re this is this book has got me excited about like the opportunities of investing thinking about it like the wild west like i almost want to just drop what i'm doing get a plane ticket to silicon valley and start like hitting angelist profiles setting up coffee meetings and like I don't know. It just, this book is, is so exciting and gets you like almost jumping out of your seat with, with opportunity and possibilities. And so, but anyway, summing this up, rating this book, five out of five stars. 
I would almost give this six out of five stars. Probably my favorite book that I've read and reviewed on the channel. Um, it's practical, it's inspiring, it's a quick read, it's fun. Um, you're getting an inside look at the mind of someone who still has decades of disruption and incredible progress and accomplishments to do. Jason Calacanis, you know, you know, mapping his playbook of someone who's been this successful and just getting an inside look at his brain and how he looks at startups, I think is, is priceless. I think if you wanna invest in startups, angel investments, even if you just wanna do investing in general, um, understanding and reading this book will be so worth your time and will be a super educational read. So with that being said, that wraps up my book review. Once again, five out of five stars. Huge shout out to Jason Calacanis. Um, huge shout out to Ryan McCaffrey, Ride the Lightning Podcast. Beautiful interview. And you gave me this awesome book recommendation. So love it. Um, Jason Calacanis, I'm going to be in San Francisco in two weeks. September 12th and 13th. I have a couple time slots open. I would love to do a podcast interview with you. Um, I know this is probably a moonshot because you're super busy and important, but I promise you it'll be amazing content. It'll only take less than an hour of your time, start to finish. I'll meet you wherever you want in Silicon Valley to get it done because I think we could come up with some amazing content. And I also have like a couple of crazy ideas about how to leverage HyperChange to set up a micro angel fund and start investing in startups through something called Hyper Angel, which I've just, yeah. So anyway, this is epic. Um, love this book. Uh, can't, rec can't recommend it enough. Anyway, this is HyperChange. If you like the show, definitely check out our Patreon page. Consider supporting there. Uh, means a lot. Huge shout out to all of our current Patreon producers. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, one more thing. If any of you have another book to read, I pretty much get all my book reviews that I do on the channel from suggestions, from people who watch, from people who tweet at me. So I love all your book recommendations. So keep them coming and let me know what I should read next.